in this session, we're going to cover economic insight. And you'll notice the titling of this, uh, this new product is squarely aligned with a strategy that we have across our suite. So technical insight, economic insight. Um, next year, we'll be looking at crowd insight, for example. So really the positioning here is that there's a whole ream of data and information available to clients and we want to be part of disseminate, disseminating that information just like economic calendar does, right? It's giving people a view as to what announcements are coming up in the world that might affect prices that people are trading. Um, but our role at Trading Central is providing an insightful layer that goes across that data and information so that people can act more quickly, that people can have some sense of uh, uh, direction, um, some information to help improve their, um, their odds, put the odds in their favor when they're trading. So what I'm gonna show you today is uh, we're gonna take a look at economic insight. I'm gonna point out the differences between what a client gets when they have our entry-level product, which is economic calendar, um, and then what they get if they upgrade to the insight version of that product, economic insight. Okay, now we can see the calendar. Good. Um, so you'll be familiar with this. I mean, this is part of our strategy to get really effective placement inside the broker experiences where it's quite common for our clients, especially our Forex broker clients to offer calendars. It's a, you know, they sort of say it's the FX traders uh, best friend is the economic calendar. Um, so we've, we've covered this in a, in a past session. Typically I come in here and I look for what's coming up that's uh, high importance, for example. And today I'm looking at, um, at 10 o'clock, we'll hear the consumer confidence flash for December. Um, and it, you know, really interesting to read because I'm going, what is this? Just like any new investor might. Um, so in the Euro area, the consumer economic sentiment indicator measures the level of optimism that consumers have about the economy. And it goes on to give some more details about this announcement. But I'm hearing, okay, what's the, what's the um, economic sentiment um, in the Euro area? That's gonna be announced at 10 o'clock. Um, so typically what happens with these calendar experiences is that people can um, you know, be aware that this is, event is coming up. Some traders will abstain from trading during that period. Some expect to take advantage of the price movement that may happen following that 10 o'clock time frame. Um, and so we've had features in the calendar before for people to add uh, this 10 o'clock uh, uh, announcement to their own personal calendars to make sure they're aware of it. Um, they can go on and look at, for example, a price chart uh, to see uh, the, the past uh, events of this kind, how they unfold over time. Um, they can look at the um, past data that's been re released and looks like these are all in the negative, <laughs> so, um, negative sentiment <laughs> of the Euro area. And where the forecast is, um, with the yellow bar and where we actually filled to with the actual results. So you can see how that tracks going back. So in this case, for example, it was a close match between the actual sentiment and the uh, forecast sentiment. In the past, for example, um, you know, the sentiment has done better, let's say, than the forecast and so on. But what we're really curious about as traders is what happens after these announcements. So 10 o'clock is coming up. What am I expecting to see on the price chart? And what I want to show you is that level of insight that we've added to the product for those that upgrade. Um, so we have this additional tab here that you wouldn't get if you have just the economic calendar. And in here, we do go back and show you that same history of all the different times that this announcement has been made, that these data points have been released for the Euro area, for example. Um, but what we've done here is we've tracked um, how the price has moved following that announcement. So in the past, for example, the price has dropped. That's why it's red here. And if I put my cursor over top of it, you can see some data points appear up here on the top left saying that after the announcement, um, the price dropped 
uh, 6.4 pips, okay? And so that's what this red bar is here, is that first data point in the top left, the price movement minus 6.4 pips. Now, this occurred in the one hour after the event. You could actually check, let's say, the four hours after the event or a much shorter time frame. So at this stage with this product, we're really just exposing people to the data that they can dig into and decide what they're curious about. It really is more of a sort of a, a data driven experience. And this is quite popular now in consumer applications where we've got data about everything in our hands. We've got data about my running statistics and you know, whatever else Yeah, you're, there's a lot, lot in the health space actually. But um, so in this case, we're letting you slice and dice and learn about the price activity that happened after without having to necessarily go back and dig into the charts yourself to kind of do that analysis. So what we see here is, you know, actually the last several announcements, the price dropped in the last four hours. Um, now, whenever we're saying the price dropped, you know, I, I'm always curious about, well, you know, did that happen right away? You know, did it move a lot before then? And so not only do we say how the price ended up after four hours, which are, which are these red bars, incidentally, but down here, we're giving you we're exposing you to the range that has happened. Um, so for example, this last announcement had a range of 26 pips. The price fluctuated perhaps up and down in that range of 26 pips and ultimately um, finished down 23 pips. Um, so that's what we're, um, we're showing here. Now it's funny because one of the things now that we've launched this and it is a new product so you can expect we'll continue to iterate on it. Um, in this case here I find that because the axes are a bit different that this bar looks bigger than that bar. I was just thinking about it. So it kind of throws me off a little bit. So I, I mentioned those things just for you to be aware of. So but um, this is a brand new product and what really excites me is we've got this great new data set to work with and I can't wait for the next stages of looking at you know, how do we help people dis discover which currency pairs they should be looking at mm -hmm. after a, a, a related to an upcoming announcement. Mm -hmm. um, so this first cut of this product is really focused on putting that data in the hands of, um, of traders. And then what's next is, well, it's in our hands too. So we can do all sorts of other interesting things with our products. Um, now this table over here on the right gives you a, a summary so for example, um, it's explaining that we summarize the volatility and direction of price movement observed after historical events. Um, this is a bit of transparency and explanation for clients, but as you're presenting the product, these are nice things to walk through too, especially with new products so that you kind of orient yourself well. Um, so we're looking at the historical impact for the Euro dollar four hours after events have happened, um, which event, we're looking at the consumer confidence flash, um, all of the different events and looking at volatility and direction of price movement. Um, now here we look past at individual events that you can inspect. And on the right in this panel, we summarize, we're basically giving you uh, a summary of taken from those 12 individual past events. Okay, so what we're saying here is that 30% of those economic events resulted in a positive price change. Okay, so that's four out of the 12. Um, most of them, 70% ended down, um, and that's eight of the 12 events. So that this is the summary that we're giving on the price change, just to help people understand the data. I mean, they can see that. They can see that there's four green bars and eight, eight red ones, uh, but that's what we're summarizing for you here. Um, we also give you an average of the, the price range that was experienced after those events. Um, so on average, the price moved in a range of almost 29 pips following these events. Um, so averages are interesting. They're not the only thing. It really is important to expose the variation in the individual results. And that's why we plot all of those individual results here. Okay. Now we could get a little curious and go further. We can start to dig in and um, filter. I'm not sure why this is 
not letting me click it, so I'll have to look into that. But the idea is that we can filter some of the events on the left. So, um, so I guess we'll have to cover that in another in another session. So maybe this is about cutting events. Yes, but this is analyzing past events. Okay. So what this should do is give you um, the option to show only those that, let's say, outperformed their forecast or underperformed their forecast. So it, it lets you get a little bit of a more customized uh, summary of the data okay. um, in terms of the average, for example. Uh, so those that outperformed their forecast might have a different average volatility than those that um, than, than looking at all of them, for example. Okay, so that's uh, the historical impact chart. Now, what I find is that ultimately these kind of summaries are, are interesting for people, but people can, could use a little bit of help understanding exactly what we're measuring here. And so I, I really like the traceability in this product back to the impact chart. In fact, I'd love to be able to click on these to get there. Um, but I'm gonna show you this other tab, which is kind of like as if I clicked on one of these bars. So in this, in this case, the November 21st event saw a price movement um, in the range of 26 pips, ultimately finishing down more than 23 pips. Now, if I go to the impact tab, we can actually see that. Um, so this is, is this the November 21st event? Okay, so it's, yeah, it is. Yeah, oh, oh, that, okay. So now you can see already, I'm, I'm doing my own usability test because it didn't retain my four hour time frame here. Um, we were looking at four hours before. Okay, so this is basically a visual of one of these bars. Okay, so the, it moved in a range of 26 pips and finished down 23 pips, and that's what we're showing you right here. So it's, a, it, it's meant to help people understand what we're measuring, and once you understand it, probably those high-level metrics are, are going to be sufficient for you. In fact, I'm really excited about taking those data points and surfacing it right in the calendar. So you see an upcoming event, and you can see on average this generates a price movement of 28 pips and finishes down or whatever. So pulling out that and surfacing at a higher level would be pretty exciting. Now, brokers could do that themselves because this product has an API. So any analytics that we offer are offered through the API. So even for example, if someone is really super committed to their own calendar, they could pull some of this data out and start placing it in their own calendar, in their own newsletter messages, you know, I can't wait to add it to our own newsletters. So it just gives our clients fodder for additional insights, even if they're not looking for uh, a calendar. So this price movement, these price movement um, insights are uh, useful data points to our, to our clients to give their traders. Um, so in this case, what we saw was, just like we saw in the other uh, visualization, this blue range, so it went up and down in a range of 26 pips and ultimately finished down uh, 23.4. Um, we summarize that here on the right. So the euro dollar price moved in a range of 26 pips during the four hours following the event, ending with a bearish trend of 23 pips. Here's the kind of price analysis that we're doing. And by the way, we've done it to every single of you know, event that's been experienced in the last, I don't know, I think we covered the last 12 events or something like that. And that's the data that's being summarized in this other tab so that you can get a quick glance and we can see on average, do most end down, do most move a lot uh, and that sort of thing. That's the end of my demo of Economic Insight. Now you can see how an insightful layer of analytics can really help traders make the most out of the upcoming economic events that are so critical to inform their positions.